Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Lift Effect podcast. I am your host, Matt McNeil, founder, clinical director, and director of human performance at Lift Effect, where we assist professional pilots with maintaining better mental health and optimizing their mental skills. The goal of this podcast is simple to help pilots and other high liability professionals and disciplines come out of the shadows to discover how we can live better lives personally and professionally. Join us each episode as we discuss various topics ranging from mental health, mental skills and performance to business, entrepreneurship, and a few other surprises along the way. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the latest episode of the Lift Effect Podcast. I'm your very tired host Mm -hmm. (laughs) this morning, Carl Keller, along with the much rejuvenated and wildly exciting man of the moment, Matt. Mm. Hey, buddy. What's up? Matt McNeil. So why are you so tired? I just got back. I took my daughter to a a symphony concert that uh, was only playing in a couple places around the country and this is something she just really, really has been looking forward to for the last few months. So, look at this! Um, what a rock star dad! The guy takes his kid uh, to a symphony concert in another city that requires air travel. That's, that's dedicated, man. Yeah, I love that. I, that's pretty amazing. Well, uh, well, she's happy, and that's all that matters. I I didn't get to do a lot of it when I was when they were real young, so trying to do some stuff for them. Yeah. How about you? How was your weekend? Weekend was nice. It was good. We just got a lot of stuff done around the house, kind of post holiday stuff that we didn't hadn't didn't have a chance to get done because of just the holiday stuff. So uh, yeah, no complaints. Ready to get back cool. at it. Yeah, I, you know, we were talking in the pre-show here about uh, some of the things that uh, we've heard and commented and mm-hmm. and uh, talked about over the last year, and uh, you uh, had mentioned. And and we had talked about that uh, it maybe it's time to kind of do a little bit of a deeper dive into some of those those uh, issues. And one of them that has been very uh, commonly mentioned and and is recurring is conversations and questions about ADHD, Asperger's, autism, mm-hmm. those kind of things, and the effect. And uh, a, it's just you name it. There's been questions about it, and I figured I'd lob you the softball and go. Let's kind of do a deep dive into ADHD. And, That's a softball. And, yeah, well, <laughs> that is a the hardest speedball I've ever heard of. But uh, oh, a, okay, you know, hey, but, but you yeah. know what? I know you're like a 400 or 500 hitter, so uh-huh. I'm already yeah. seeing bang zoom. Oh gosh, uh, you know now I'm now you're just dis- it's only going to be disappointment from here on out. You know, no, I, over I, the green wall. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> clinical syndromes. There's a lot of people we we you know the first season of our podcast, the first year. We really stayed away from that because I just didn't know what, how that would land and what people would be interested in. And I don't want people trying to diagnose themselves, you know, or somebody else, but there has been just, that is one itch that we have not, you know, scratched from listeners is like, they want to get into the nitty gritty about certain things that, and it's certainly look, we're looking at, you know, we, we deal primarily with pilots and, um, air traffic controllers and uh, physicians and, you know, like safety critical professionals. So certain conditions like mental retardation is not going to be something that would probably be that useful for our population. Um, but that one of the things that the, the normal depression, anxiety, um, OCD, uh, psychosis even has come up. But another one is ADHD, attention deficit Uh, hyperactivity disorder has been consistently a request (laughs) is can you please do an episode because i'm adhd or i think my you know partner is adhd or you know i'm convinced i'm i I have adhd and you know adhd for uh, pilots is a disqualifying has been historically a disqualifying uh, condition especially if medication is part of the the deal so, um, that's been a big one. Should we, I, I think we could yeah, maybe no, get I, into some I, ADHD for a while. Absolutely. I, I mm-hmm. will say that I, I guess we didn't really know where this was all going to go. Like you said a year ago. So, uh, I guess I've been a little bit surprised myself mm-hmm. 
that how technical and detailed and in depth the our listeners have wanted us to go because uh, i was always wondering were we going to dive too deep where the people yeah. are going to go oh i i no. just want to know what it is and how to fix it not the the nitty gritty like you say so it's uh our listeners it, are nerds that- pilots are nerds we get into <laughs> you know it's like I, I remember calling up a friend and i said wait hey, what are you doing and he's like oh i'm just sitting here drinking a glass of scotch reading the terps <laughs> I'm like, he's like, oh, there's nothing better than sitting down with a, a stiff drink and diving <laughs> into the Terps. I'm like, dude, you're such a pilot. You know, we we get well, into I, it. We like to get into the the, the system. I, I will tell it. you that I had a friend of mine. I told him because when he says, oh, you do a podcast, what do you do? Hmm. And I told him, and he said, well, what's the name? And I told him, and he and he comes back and he goes, I just thought he would just want to see what we did. And he says, oh my god, I'm listening to all these. And I said. I had no idea you were like interested you say, a nerd in all like this. That. Yeah, yeah, I, I had, I would never have expected that. But so uh, I'm glad it's reaching a, a a lot of people, and mm-hmm. that it's having, it's provoking a lot of questions. Yeah, that that like you say, it's scratching a lot of itches that people probably wanted to know and how to deal with. So I think it's a great time to start getting in depth with one of those because, like you said, it's been a question that that's popped up um, rather regularly. Right. So. There's your software. Okay, AD, let's go ADHD. Let's get into it. I've been kind of excited to to talk about this and planning on having a guest or two uh, around this topic of ADHD. So let's start with this. Will be well. We'll this will probably be a couple different episodes to really go thorough on this. But let's start with a hundred thousand foot view, and then we'll kind of zoom in. So one is why does this matter? Why why are we talking about this? Well, the question I get all the time is can pilots have ADHD? Well, the regulations regarding individuals with ADHD, you know, that want to get be a medical certificate holder, it varies country by country and uh, av- and their particular aviation authority. In the US, we have the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA. And they have their own regulatory guidelines regarding ADHD and medical certificate, uh, the ability to hold a medical certificate of any class. And as of, uh, I think it's January of 2022, there have been a few cases where the FAA permits individuals with ADHD ADHD to hold a first or second class medical certificate. Um, But certain criteria have to be met. So here's like the key, I think the key points are are on. And I would say Historically, ADHD is disqualifying. You can't have ADHD and be a certificate holder. Personally, I think it's absurd, but that's been the policy. So one is no medication. You cannot be on any medication, which is like, if anybody knows, and we're going to get into the treatments and all that, but medication is the most effective treatment for ADHD. So that is just going to eliminate a lot of people right there on that one. But the FAA does not allow uh, people with ADHD, diagnosed ADHD, to be on medication. They've got to be evaluated typically by a neuropsychologist, not a neuropsychiatrist, but a neuropsychologist, because the neuropsychologist, as we know from our talks on the SSRI uh, protocols for pilots, the neuropsychologist is able to administer a battery of tests that assess neurocognition so that is required and then a uh, aviation medical examiner typically a hims ame is the, the the ame that would be involved in that process and then assess the medical history and then the, the diagnosis and the, the treatment and the testing and then obviously the psychological testing so um it's it's very important for you if you're Thinking about, there's a lot of um, students that listen to this podcast, a lot of people that are thinking about going into aviation as a career. It's important that you, uh, if you have ADHD and you've been diagnosed with ADHD, and this is a whole thing, is that there are periods of time where like everybody was diagnosed with ADHD. It was really, really popular. Um, and that is a factor in your ability to hold a medical certificate. So it's important that you really educate yourself around the the regulations and the and I would say the changing regulations. Hopefully we're going to see some changes, but 
I'm not holding my breath too too much on that. So, I got a question yeah. for you in that mm-hmm. regards then. Because like you said, there was a time when, uh, you know, autism, Asperger's, ADHD, it was just like left and right. If someone got that when they were uh, diagnosed with that as a child, is that pretty much, do you feel like that is a, 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 a death knell for them right now still? Uh, no, or it's is, not. Or is that a very difficult hurdle to No, to it, it, it's, adjudicate it's a speak? hurdle. It's a hurdle. And what it requires is <clears throat> current new evaluation to determine if there's ADHD. So it just requires like, okay, you know, it's like, you know, think about like a, an MRI to see if there's a, a tear in a ligament, right? Okay. Well, there's a tear in the ligament. Uh, you can't fly with a tear in your ligament in your foot because you can't operate the rudder pedals. Well, you wait 12 months or 16 months to go back, get another MRI and do another scan to see if it's there. Well, it's like another scan of testing to see if ADHD, in fact, have you adapted? Have you outgrown it? Is that even possible? D- was it misdiagnosed to begin with? That's a, a key a key piece. So you can override. You got to get a new new evaluation to have it over over you know to override it. So I think maybe what we could start with, if we're going to talk about ADHD, is um, well, let's talk about. There's we'll get into the clinical criteria, and we can really we'll like deep dive it? into like that. Say. Well, yeah, <laughs> what is it? Um, but but let me just say. Okay, well, yeah, let's start with that. So ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, and it is a neurodevelopment disorder that affects children and adults. So there's no age limit on it. And it's characterized by persistent patterns of inattention. Can be, it's an and or, right, you know, inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity that impacts people uh, in various constellations of their life. The, and the level of impact, it, it depends. Sometimes it's very little impact. Sometimes it's devastating impact. Yeah, I've always heard it kind of like a rheostat where it can be very, you know, b- barely registering yep. to like uh, extreme severe severity. And yeah. that was part of what makes it so hard when you get that label that mm-hmm. that it doesn't give any context as to okay how how severe is yeah. the is is it yeah yeah it's very varying levels of severity but there are three main subtypes <clears throat> subtypes of ADHD the first one is is predom- it's called predominantly inattentive type ADHD slash i predominantly inattentive type. And this is where individuals with ADHD, they struggle with being able to sustain attention, being able to organize tasks, and then just being able to complete the task. And on appearance, and again, we're going to kind of deep dive into this, but they appear forgetful, easily distracted, and they just they just have very hard time following through on tasks. So that's just pre, that's predominantly inattent, inattentive type. The second type is predominantly hyperactive impulsive presentation. We call that ADHD dash HI or slash HI. Hyperactive impulsive presentations, and this is where they display hi, hyperactivity and impulsive behavior without significant inattention. All right, so I know this can get a little confusing, but there's a hyperactive and an impulsiveness, but they are able to sustain attention. And they, they, so what does it look like? Sometimes they have trouble sitting still. They talk excessively, act just on impulse without really considering the consequences. Now, let me add to you that there are stages of development growing up with little kids where impulsivity inability to be att- is is developmentally appropriate for all kids you know a three-year-old now don't don't write me emails to be like my three-year-old seems like they're impulsive it's like every three-year-old is impulsive even five-year-olds have levels of impulsivity um you know so like 
and inattention and, and, and attention <laughs> and yeah and, and a little bit of narcissism you know yeah it's a little like, bit of everything a little bit of everything <laughs> so that doesn't don't go diagnosing your kids that's not what i want you to do but these are just the subtypes so there's predominantly inattentive type there's predominantly hyperactive impulsive presentation and then the third is just a combined presentation so it's adhd-c and this subtype includes just inattention hyperactive and impulsive symptoms so okay you had a question I, yeah, yeah. cuz you said it can affect all you know at at young and older yeah is this something that can develop as you get older or is it something that just wasn't diagnosed yeah, properly? I think it wasn't diagnosed. you had it your whole life yeah yeah you had it yeah. your whole life you just yeah. didn't know you had now, it now i think, think that there are times where certain medical conditions can can create um some of these symptoms like certain illnesses can happen when when kids are little or even brain injuries traumatic brain injuries um can can make this even more convoluted so let me just give you a a, a key thing here let's when you get a, a diagnosis of adhd a proper diagnosis of adhd cannot be accomplished in 30 minutes in the gp's office a proper diagnosis now that is where usually a lot of times just gets diagnosed the gp goes the 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 uh pediatrician is like yeah let's just put timmy on ritalin uh, and and be done with it. And like, does that do oh the my trick? God. You know, it, it, okay, oh, maybe. Ritalin. <laughs> right. But let me just say that a proper, and you talk to the the leading world's experts, and I have read everything, uh, all the books, all the studies. I'm very interested in this. Um, the, a proper diagnosis cannot be done in less than four hours of evaluation. And it really needs to be done by an, a neuropsychologist or a neuropsychiatrist. That is the that specializes in ADHD to get a proper diagnosis. There can be all sorts of other things that can look like ADHD, but it's actually not. So ADHD is not the simple, just you know, it's. It, I mean, I swear, like it, it, diagnosing with well, really any mental health thing is done in fifteen minutes in the GP's office, and it's just like that. That is just it's a system of a, a poor medical system. It's a product of a poor medical system. A proper diagnosis of ADHD requires extensive testing and very specific uh, knowledge set from the professional. So don't go diagnosing yourself. And a lot of diagnoses that happen by the well-intentioned practitioner are just dead wrong. And I understand, look, they've got only a few minutes to work with somebody. They're trying to help the patient. They said, look, let's just try this and see if it works. Maybe it'll help. Maybe it won't. And they've got to code it as something. But that really is sort of a barbaric uh, approach to accurately identifying and labeling a syndrome that is as complicated as ADHD. I can tell you that there was a certain period of time in the early 2000s that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I still remember teachers going, you're, 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 you know, talking about how the certain kids would be hyperactive, you know, and they wanted them to calm down. So they would tell, they, tell, they actually would tell the, the parents, well, you know, you need to get them on Ritalin to calm them down. They're just so hyperactive. I'm going, that's what young kids are. So I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me that a lot of the diagnosis where people just want I want to calm my kid down. He's just, he's just hyperactive when it's just being a child, not, and they just didn't want to, uh, didn't know how else to address it. But uh, yeah. Ritalin just is a very, just, Everybody was on Ritalin, like, oh, yeah, for for yeah. a while. You know, what is it? The, uh, wasn't another one Adderall? Adderall, yep, yep. yep. And there's there's another a bunch one. of other ones, a bunch of other medications. Those are the two that I remember mm -hmm. that oh, you, people would throw out. Yeah, I put my kid on Adderall or I put my kid on Ritalin. And I'm going, wow, yeah. Uh, so I'm wondering if that big em epidemic of ADHD was really not real in its entirety, but kind of somewhat yeah well and it's interesting because like when probably when you were in school and when i was in school i'm a gen xer was in grade school in the the 80s and you know there were kids that i think were absolutely adhd and they didn't we didn't have these diagnoses available and so they were just labeled as dumb or lazy or just bad kids disruptive disruptive kids yeah. you know um you know when it was like if they had been properly diagnosed and had properly treated, it would have really helped 
helped them um or just labeled as learning dis- you know having a learning disability um which i hate that word i think learning difference is better um so when you think about the the characteristics inattentive that looks like well difficulty sustaining attention in tasks or play activities frequent you know careless mistakes in schoolwork or or other activities and just forgetfulness in just daily daily stuff forgetfulness hyperactivity is fidgeting restlessness inability to stay seated in situations where it is ex- you know where you need to be seated um talking excessively and actually one of the 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 kind of telltale signs of hyperactivity is is um it's a con- it's actually a condition of under stimulation so just falling asleep just you know, cannot stay awake unless there's fidgeting so if it's like you force them to calm down they just they're out and so that that's a hyperactivity type and then the impulsivity is is you know like okay difficulty waiting your turn interrupting others making very hasty decisions without considering the consequences that's just a, a quick hundred thousand foot view of those three subtypes now it's diagnosed how do you get a diagnosis um well the quick and dirty way is to use something called the dsm the the diagnostic uh and status a statistical manual of mental disorders the, we're at the dsm-5 right now i'm i'm i can i've got got one right here and if i look up adhd there is a you know here's some diagnostic criteria of the three types their features and it's just a quick you know it's like so here says a a persistent pattern of attention and or hyperactivity impulsivity that interferes with functioning or development as characterized by one and two and then there's inattention and then there's hyperactivity and impulsivity type so again that's this this little quick manual that's got a list of symptoms and duration and age and so a clinician would look through and they would and read through it and try to evaluate it very quickly there are much better ways of diagnosing now and that's where a real professional that as a specialist in this is going to use all sorts of inter- you know they're going to interview they're going to take a very extensive history they're going to assess a battery of tests to be able to get at a real diagnosis but it's typically diagnosed based on the dsm and it's important to know that adhd it's a medical condition and it's its exact cause it's not fully understood genetics environmental factors brain structure um and the way the brain functions that it all plays a role in its development so treating adhd it combines a combination of behavior therapy psychoeducation medication to treat it so when we in terms of treatment did you have a question you look like you well i was you know as we're talking about it, I, I wanted to t- just touch really quickly on one other thing, and mm. that is, I feel sometimes they're almost, inter- people use them interchangeably, and they're not, and that is autism versus totally separate. ADHD. Yeah, they're, I, but they're, they're neuro- they, there's a lot of similarities, but there's some key differences. Yeah. And it just, what real quick, what would what is the big difference between autism I and ADHD? I cannot even begin to summarize that. Is there one? Um, that you that about is or not? too yeah, too complicated to even approach that as what is the difference. Okay. I, here's what I'll say. They are different. And sometimes there can be both in there. But that is a totally different circumstance. And I wouldn't I wouldn't interchange them and I I, I know you're not doing that, but some people they interchange them and it's they're completely separate. Is there a key difference that would point you in one direction versus the other? Uh, uh, and I'm not trying I, to take I, I you don't, down a rabbit I don't hole. want to rabbit hole this. I, it's okay. too complicated. It's too. Let's stay focused. Let's stay focused on Maybe ADHD. We can talk about that. Yeah, oh, <laughs> talk about that later we'll on. We'll talk then, about. Yeah, think, we'll do an autism because there is thing. definitely. I, I that I just I feel like because I think the treatment is different for the two, and you don't want somebody to interchange them. I think and and start walking down the wrong path that's all uh, yeah i mean i think <sighs> we'll save it for another yeah day. There, there's just so much in there i i can't i can't begin to um I mean, by the I, way you're welcome yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean autism you know is like there's there's 
well, I guess that it, it look it can look like ADHD as well, but um, people thought for the longest time I thought they were just it was like Asperger's. It was just a type of autism, r- right? And that was when I for the longest time I thought they're, they're we're talking about the same thing. We're just talking yeah, about I mean, what autism, kind of autism is it? Autism spectrum disorder so is is it's it's like challenges in social communication, social interaction, um, restricted and repetitive behaviors. Uh, these nonverbal communication, like such as making eye contact, understanding gestures, being able to develop relationships. ADHD is more persistent patterns of inattention and hyperactivity and impulsivity. That's that's how there I would go. differentiate. Okay, that's just so stay stay tuned for yeah, don't, a, uh, an episode on right. Autism. Yeah, that's just <laughs> that is not a clear diagnostic definition. Okay, just as a I'm putting a lot of disclaimers here because I don't want people running with. Matt said it was the, you know, like this don't, I'm not an expert in ADHD or autism. So, and now you know why I'm not a <laughs> licensed clinician. <laughs> oh, right, right. So I just, okay. So, but like when we think about treatment, there's been a lot of advances in treatment for ADHD, new medications for treatment, um, are, are available specific dietary and nutritional suggestions, including like, you know, fish oils and omega threes, fatty acids, to our supplements to treatment ADHD, new information um, on on the use of physical exercise to treat a, um, ADD, ADHD. Uh, there's even like a 12 step treatment um, uh, program for ADD. And there, so there's a lot of new advances in treatment. And the research into the diagnosis, there's there, a lot of new approaches to diagnosis. This is why you really want to go to a specialist. Because they have the latest and greatest in, in um, you know, ways to assess uh, new diagnostic screening questionnaires for ADD in adults, which is, you know, I think the World Health Organization just did a recent thing where they have uh, questionnaires for where you are in your different lifespan to be able to determine that. Um, there are uh, EEG tools like, you know, um, a, a quantitative uh, electroencephalogram studies that can be done on this and so and spec scans so there's a lot of different diagnostic tools uh, that um has happened and i think there's a lot new information that's come out in the last 15 25 years about well i would say the last 10 years about like uh what does add in adults look like versus just kids it used to be thought of as it's just a childhood Thing, and that's where it gets captured. The emphasis has changed to one on talents and strengths in ADHD versus it's just seen as a deficit. When I was, you know, younger, it's a disability, right? Yeah. It's just a disability. And well, it's actually there's, you know, people with ADD or ADHD have a lot of, and and people with the learning disabilities. The, a, a characteristic of learning of the the learning disabilities like, like difference is that massively high in one area and then very very low in another. Whereas the general population might just be sort of average along all areas. So people with those kinds of differences typically really excelled in certain areas and then more deficient or or underperform in other areas. So again, I think that the the approach the strength approach is is a, an important factor in terms of, of ADHD. So that's kind of like your general, like this is a place to start. What is it? What is ADHD? There's the different subtypes. There's a differentiation. And I think, I don't know. I don't know if we should continue more out of this for today. I think we can deep dive into more of this later, but what, what are your questions about? And let's talk about this from an aviation perspective. So, well, uh, I have one other question. When you say yeah. the subtypes, mm-hmm. is any one of those three predominant? Yeah, they're usually just- you're you are one of the no. Oh, you mean in terms of the population? Yes, that's a very good is question. There- I don't have an answer for that. Which, yeah, I have no idea. But you are when you're diagnosed, you are typically, um, you know, diagnosed into really inattentive or hyperactive type. And then there's the combined, but it's usually your one or, or the, the, the inattentive type or the, the hyperactive type. The impulse. Cause all type. I've ever heard is ADHD. I've never right. heard of ADHD dash H I. Yeah. As an example. Yeah. You, you never see that hyphenated piece. You right. Just see the 
first four. Well, and if you don't have a uh, hyperactivity type, you just have ADD, attention deficit disorder, inattentive type, right? And then there's attention disorder, att attention uh, hyperactivity disorder, right? Hyperactive, impulsive presentation type, H HI. So the, just think of the two types. You usually most people are are kind of one or the other. There are the combined ones, but it's usually you're diagnosed with one or the other. It's funny, like let's think about this. So think about the like for our pilot colleagues, and really. Honestly, any of our professionals that are just peak performers, high liability, high stress. So the almost obsessive ability to focus. Most of us mm -hmm. have that, that, that ability, or we wouldn't be able to like do our job. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. I, I, you know, we, we, like you say, this was primarily about aviation, but I'll tell you another profession that's that way is surgeons. Think about hyper hours. ability to oh focus. Oh my God. For hours and on inside of the body, it's just, uh, uh, you know, you have to have that. Otherwise you're, you are not going to be a good surgeon or like you say, a good pilot. It just, you just have to have that attention Yep. over an extended period of time. And and I think this hyper ability to focus, you know, interestingly, surgeons can have ADHD. They can be on meds. They could be on medication. So, oh, you mean, so they can yeah. be licensed to practice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, pilots can't. Does that make any sense? I guess the difference is you're affecting only one life versus hundreds of lives. Who cares? Though? But, but, being, but in I'm terms being, of- in terms I'm being of, sarcastic when I yeah, say that. Yeah, but in terms of your saying. ability to perform- I mean, yeah. I think the, again, th this is where my, my criticism of the FAA is like, they have policies that are based on voodoo. Th there's not science to support this idea that, you know, oh my gosh, you are a safety threat because you have depression or you have anxiety. You are a threat to safety and you have any level of clinical syndrome, which is a diagnosis means you are too dangerous to not operate an aircraft. Well, that that's just silly. And there's no, there's no data that supports that argument, but that's how the policies are made. I mean, that's the equivalent of saying, you know what, because somebody got septic in a hospital, all hospitals will give you sepsis. If that was the case, yeah. nobody would go to the hospital. They wouldn't, they wouldn't seek treatment. And the FAA has really created policies around mental health that is like, you know, there's no level that is acceptable. It's got to be in, in quote unquote air quotes remission for it to be treated or for it to, for you I, to be uh, 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 fit, fit to fly. I think a lot of it is, is I want to want to use the word ignorance, but lack of knowledge. If they don't know what it is or don't understand it, then the answer is just, you can't have it. And th when that, when those policies were put into place with those regulations, it wasn't nearly as understood as it is now. Right. And now the hard part is undoing what has been done for so long. Yeah. Uh, it could be a large part of it. It's just, it's the bureaucratic. It's um, totally bureaucratic. And, and, but you know, inability yeah. to move quickly yeah. to go, okay, things have changed. Yeah. And the problem is, is that if you have ADHD and it's not treated, your life sucks. And the lives around the people around you suck. It is so disruptive. It, ADHD, untreated ADD or ADHD is painful. It is painful. And it has comorbidity with um, depression, anxiety, meaning these things coexist and they chase each other. But not being able to concentrate, not being able to focus is very ang anxiety producing. And it can be very depressing. For people so it's it's a it's a serious medical condition that needs to be treated and when it's not you know your life sucks let's talk about there's a so there's some differential diagnosing okay i thought i was done but i'm not typical maybe it's adhd Squirrel. i don't know yeah exactly <laughs> there's there's these differential diagnoses that that happen where it, it it's you got to be able to tease out the difference between the two Oppositional defiant disorder, that's one. 
I'm just looking and I've just got the DSM here that I've got in front of me. So it says oppositional defiant disorder. This is individuals with, with they call ODD may resist work or school tasks that require self-application because they resist conforming to others' demands. Their behavior is characterized by negativity, hostil- hostility, and defiance. And so there's forgetting instructions. There's uh, difficulty sustaining mental effort uh, and impulsivity. And so complicating the differential diagnosis is the fact that some individuals with ADHD may develop secondary oppositional attitudes towards such tasks and devalue their importance, right? Think about it. If you can't focus and you get treated badly in school because you're just labeled as stupid, well, well, how do you think that's going to make you respond eventually to school? You're going to be like, you know, middle finger. You're like, why would I want to subject myself to this? And then there's is that a subcategory of no, ADA, uh, no, ADD or ODD no. is it's like its different- own separate. It's its own separate thing. So, and this is again, I'm trying to make the point. You need to go to a specialist, yeah. not just your GP that says like, yeah, okay, here's some Ritalin audio. So I'm going to put your ADHD in your note. You know, that can follow you around for a long time. Oh, it, it will. And it there's will. people that won't even go because they're afraid of that, of that label. Right. Because it does affect you, especially in schools. Right. And you know, so, so d- understanding the, 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 the difference between like ODD, intermittent explosive disorder, we don't have to get, I'm just reading some of these, other neurodevelopment disorders, specific learning disorders, um, intellectual disability, these are just like developmental disorders, autism spectrum disorder, reactive attachment disorder, RAD. Anxiety disorders, depressive disorders, bipolar disorders, disruptive mood dysregulations, substance use disorders, personality disorders, psychotic disorders, medication-induced symptoms of ADD, neurocognitive disorders. It's complicated. And I think I just heard our next 16 episodes. Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, (laughs) I mean, do you, and do you really think the clinician, the the GP is going through all this when they, they slap that label on there? Of course they don't because they don't have the time to do it. Or the or the expertise to do that, and, and and I have to say one other thing that especially for for those with young children and they're trying to figure this stuff out, I hate to say it, people also bring into effect uh, or they factor in their medical insurance. What it yeah, covers, and not everybody cover. has the uh, that's the, a huge the resources issue. to do this. Yeah, you know, or they're under the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a really it's a very complicated thing. I think. One of the questions I get is, is gender, you know, is, are there sort of gender differences? It's more ADHD hyperactivity is more frequent in males than in females in the general population. It's like two to one uh, in children. And then it's like one to six to one or something in adults. And the females were more likely than males to present primarily with just inattentive features. And that's a big, there's a huge bias where uh, women or f- females are underdiagnosed with AD, uh, ADD and males are overdiagnosed. Females have ADD, ADHD. And when people think of ADD, they typically, what do you, what's the first thing you think of, right? You think of a male. Mm-hmm. It's, it's yep. females have it too. And it's very underdiagnosed in females. So there's a lot to it. So the, I think the, the takeaway from today, and we will get more into what does the experience feel like? to have AD, ADD or ADHD? What does that actually look like on a day-to-day? And I, I think that's what we'll get into next. But the takeaway I want for you to walk away with today is ADD, ADHD is a real thing. It's not made up. It's not, it's not because you're, I think there's a, a great book called Fat, Lazy, Fat, Lazy and Stupid or something like that, which is like, you know, people typically are told, stop being lazy, stop, don't, stop being stupid that had ADHD, that was how they were labeled. You're just being lazy. You're just not working hard enough or you're just dumb. It's, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. There's a, a great book that I want to recommend. If you're interested in, in learning about ADD, ADHD, probably the, the leading expert in this is a guy named Ed Hallowell. He's a medical doctor and he wrote a book called Driven to Distraction, which was the first book. Fantastic read. But they wrote a second one, which I think is probably the best book for really understanding experientially what it's like to have ADD, ADHD. And Dr. Hallowell has ADD. It's called Delivered from from Distraction, Getting the Most Out of Life with Attention Deficit Disorder. 
this book is so good. And I have had clients that I've recommended it to that, that have ADD or ADHD, or they're on that path of trying to discover it. And when they'll read this book, they're like, oh my God, that's me. You know, it's just written from a really incredible firsthand perspective. It's got enough of the science in it, but it's also got the experience of it, of what that looks like. And one of the things that Dr. Howell says is having ADD is like having a Ferrari for a brain. It's like, but what's got the the braking system of a, a, a pedal bike, you know, it's like, you've got all this acceleration, but you don't have this ability to slow down. And I think that's one of the greatest descriptors of, of ADD I've ever heard. But if you're interested, you can look at this book delivered from distraction by Ed Hallowell, H A L L O W E L L. Fantastic read. Maybe we'll do a book review someday on it. Um, but the walk, the takeaway for today is just, it's a very, it's a real thing that is a very complicated diagnosis to reach a, a actual true diagnosis. And there's lots of really good treatment that's available. So we'll get into that on, on another episode, but, and secondly, the FAA needs to rethink their policies on it because if they think pilots can't operate an aircraft safely that have ADD or ADHD, they're just, they're burying their head in the sand. There are many, many pilots that have ADD, ADHD that is untreated. And in fact, being at work gives them almost the only sense of relief that they get is this ability to just strap in and focus and do their job. They're incredible pilots. They're very safe. The problem is when they get on the ground and they've got to exist in the rest of their, you know, the, the rest of the, the, the 24 hours, they're suffering because they don't have that task to be able to lock into. And the FAA needs to, these, these people are suffering and they deserve to be uh, treated effectively rather than just, you know, keep driving them underground. The regulations drive them underground so that they really can't get the treatment because they right. risk their, their, their livelihood. That's right. When they're very, very functioning and safe. Yep. Part one, ADHD, ADD. Well, I think you've already given the one takeaway for the day. If you like what you heard, there's more. Listen to the previous podcast. If you're new to us, give us a thumbs up, a like. Please spread the word. That's uh, how it's been, how we've grown our audience so far. And if you like what, you, if you really like what you hear, please give our premium channel a listen. There's a lot of additional content, uh, book reviews, you can uh, uh, engage with uh, questions and comments. Also, the uh, in all of the descriptions on whether it's on Spotify or Apple, I, there is a link that allows you to get to sign up for a free newsletter that we send out every week. So, as always, we thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Send your comments. If you have any comments, we'll take those at podcast at lifteffect.com. Questions are for the premium feed, but uh, we'll always take comments, positive, negative, good, bad. We want, to, we want them all. We want to grow. We want to get better and provide you what you want to hear. We thank you. We look forward to seeing you on our next podcast. Until then, have a great day. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Lift Effect Podcast. If you want to dive deeper into this episode and every episode, go to the Lift Effect Podcast dot podbean. That's P-O-D-B-E-A-N dot com. If you're enjoying the show, we would love it if you'd follow us on Spotify and rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate your support. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, all with the ID Matthew McNeil. This show is brought to you by Lift Effect, a clinical mental health and consulting company that assists air carriers, corporate flight departments, pilot unions, and commercial pilots by providing comprehensive psychotherapy and mental coaching services to pilots with mental health and mental performance related issues. Visit lifteffect.com, that's L I F T A F F E C T.com to book your free consultation. And finally, this podcast is for general informational purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of counseling, psychotherapy, medicine, or any other healthcare service, including the giving of medical advice. 
no therapeutic or provider-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and any materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional psychological advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining advice for any psychological or medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the Lift Effect Podcast.